Well, hello there, friends, and welcome back to the Marley Bird YouTube channel and video two of the three-in-one hand warmers by Marley Bird. <laughs> if you don't know by now, this is a video series teaching you how to make a really cute pair of mittens or fingerless mittens or convertible mittens all using one pattern. That pattern is free and available at yarnspirations.com. I've put a link in the video description box right down there below. And while you're down there, smash that like button as my kids say, because I know you're going to enjoy this video series. If you have not started on your hand warmers yet, it is not too late to join in. Make sure you get that pattern and complete the cuff of the pattern. I've already done a video showing you everything you need to know to complete that so you can watch video one and then join me back here for this video where I get you started on the hand and the thumb gusset. We're also going to talk about how to use the two colors throughout this stitch pattern. This is a very important video, so don't skip any part of the video. And if there's something that is a little bit tricky, remember that you can always rewind and watch it again. All right, I have my cuff complete from video one, and we're going to jump in and start with the hand instructions. Boy, am I excited to get started on this hand warmer. This is my cuff and there is my seam. For this part of the pattern, we will be using a larger hook size. So I have went up a hook size and I am going to start by joining my color A right here at the seam. So I've just stuck my hook directly into the seam, yarn over, pulled up a loop, yarn over and draw through that one loop. So I've joined with a slip stitch and now I'm ready to begin working the first setup row. The first setup row has us do a chain one and then I'm going to evenly space out 28 single crochet working all around the top of my cuff. So what I like to do and you might like to do as well is I like to put one single crochet in for each row that I have and then if I happen to maybe have one too few rows to meet the 28 I'll just double up a couple stitches into one row or if I have one too many, I'll skip one row and put a stitch in. So for this uh, part of the pattern, simply just go around. You'll notice I'm piercing into the stitch essentially on the rows that uh, start off or that end with the single crochet there. And then on the rows where it kind of starts off with that chain one, let me see if I can get this in there. I like to pierce the stitch. I think it looks better. Um, and then with the, the row that starts with that chain one there, I just stick it right into that chain one. If you don't want to do that, you could go right down here to where that stitch is right there. Whatever you decide to do, just be consistent with it. That is the name of the game at this point. And we do want to make sure we get the 28 single crochet. Now, if for some reason you're making your mittens bigger or smaller, I just want to caution you. You want to make sure that you are decreasing at um, a multiple of four or increasing at a multiple of four because the stitch pattern is a multiple of four. And you want to do your best to keep the thumb gusset really in the center of the fabric. So if you're looking at the chart, you could decrease um, two stitches from either side of the chart or increase two stitches at either side of the chart to maintain the stitch pattern and to keep the placement of the thumb. So hopefully that little, little tip here helps you if you are deciding to make yours a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller. And I am going to continue working around here and I will count to make sure I have all 28 of my stitches. So let's get to the end. And this does take a little bit of time, so be patient with yourself. When you get to the end, you will join with a slip stitch to the first single crochet you completed right here on this round, okay? I joined with a slip stitch. And this is one of the only rounds you join with a slip stitch because as we make the hand warmer itself, we're going to work in spirals. Now I'm going to the second setup row where we will chain one, and then we're gonna do a single crochet back post around each of the single crochets all the way around. So I'm going to go back here and going from back 
around the post of the single crochet and back the other side. So if you were to look closely, you can see I came from the back underneath that V, came around the front and went back through the front under that V, yarn over, and then I bring my hook back that path and I complete my single crochet. And then we'll do it again. We'll go from the back through that V, around the front, and through the front through that V, yarn over, and then bring that path back. And what this does is it gives a really nice um, definition to the edge of the mitten here. I thought it was a, a nice little detail. The biggest thing is as you're working around this, this round, just make sure at the end you still have 28 single crochets. So continue working around this round, placing these single crochet back posts all the way around. As you work around the last single crochet back post, you're supposed to join with a slip stitch to the first single crochet you completed. All right, so you join with the slip stitch to the first single crochet you completed. Now we will chain one and we will work into each single crochet all the way around. So essentially we just did three rounds of single crochets with one of those rounds making the single crochets work through the back post only. And it just gives us this nice little trim that I thought was a beautiful detail right above the cuff of the hand warmer. As you come up to the end of this round, I want you to remember we will not be joining with a slip stitch on this round because it is after this round we begin to work in spirals. So I'm gonna pause at this point and we're gonna take a little look at the chart so that way we can kind of get an idea of what it is we will be doing with the color work, okay? So as we look at the chart, the biggest thing to note here is that we are changing colors every two stitches as we work a round. And then every two rounds, we change the order of those stitches. It's really that easy. It's just a simple checkerboard sort of look. What you need to remember most is that as you are changing from one color to the next, we wanna make sure we change colors in the last draw through of the stitch before the new color is supposed to be used. I'll show you how to do that here in a second. It's really easy. And then the color we will not be using, we will be single crocheting or actually the split single crocheting right over top of that color. So we're gonna carry both colors all the way around throughout the mitten. So it is double thickness, but the other color will be hidden by the stitches that we're using. Now, when you're looking at the chart and you are looking right up here at this big blank spot, that's where our thumb gusset will be worked. And it, it's really not that difficult. When we get to the thumb gusset, you'll see what I mean. It'll You'll be able to understand what's happening. But for the most part, we're just changing colors every two stitches and then we change the order of those colors every two rounds, all right? So that's really the, the, the meat of what you have to remember. Now, when I said that we had to change colors in the last stitch before the stitch where we have to use that new color, that's where we are right here. So this is the last stitch of my previous row and what I wanna do is go ahead and undo that last stitch so that I have two loops on my hook. It's at this point I will grab my color B and I will yarn over with color B and pull through. So that leaves me with my color B on my hook. My color A is finished and I'm ready to continue on working in split single crochets all the way around and changing colors as according to the chart, which we just talked about. So with color A, I'm gonna rest it on top of my work so that I can work around it and it'll be there when I need to change colors again. And now I'm going to work a split single crochet. So I, I realize that right now I just threw a whole lot at you, but I know you can do this, all right? So this is our setup, here we are. We're gonna change colors every two stitches and we're gonna work this split single crochet. The split single crochet is worked into the post of this single crochet. So do you see this V right there? We're essentially going to take our hook and pierce it right through the center of that V. Make sure your, co your color you're not using is resting on top. And then yarn over with the color you want to use 
and pull up a loop. So now you have two loops on your hook, yarn over and draw through two. I want to make a note, do not make that stitch super tight, otherwise it'll be nearly impossible to get into as you're doing these split single crochets. If you found that this row here that we're working into is a little bit too snug, take a minute, rip it out and do it again and make sure those single crochets are a little bit loose, okay? So that was the first one. We have to do another one. So I go to the next single crochet. I will pierce right through the center, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, draw through two. Now it's time to change colors. Ah, but I didn't change colors, right? I should have changed colors on the last draw through right there. So what I would do is I would take out that last draw through so I get two loops on my hook, drop the color I was using, pick up the color I wanna change to, yarn over and pull through with that new color. Now I have the color I want to use next on my needle or on my hook. I rest the color I'm not using on my work and I carry on with the split single crochet. So I just continue doing this and we're gonna do this until it's time to work our gusset stitches. So it becomes pretty rhythmic and you won't have to um, like rip out your work all the time. You'll, you'll get to a rhythm where you remember to change colors and uh, it's okay if your colors sort of twist when you're changing them. I'll show you, you probably just saw what I just did. And I will tell you like this first pull up, that's the one you wanna make sure is a little bit loose so that way you, you can get into it next time. Um, but yeah, that's, this is what you're doing. This is the split single crochet. So right here, I don't have to twist my yarn because so the uh, color A is just right there waiting for me, okay? But when I go back to change to color B again, you're gonna see that I sort of twist my yarns around each other so that way I don't get a hot mess with my skeins of yarn. That one's a little bit snug. And you just wanna make sure you're just kind of piercing through it. Yarn over and pull up. So right here, you see it looks like this yarn is over top. So that's what I mean by twisting. It's just resting on top and that's fine. It's no big deal. So as I pull that through, like my color A is good, my color B is on my hook, and I just continue on. So it's a little bit tedious as far as changing colors all the time, but the overall look gives this really nice, um, sort of a knit stitch sort of look. I know that um, some people have called this like the waistcoat waist coat stitch. Um, like you just kind of mess with it. And as, as you've noticed, I've pr I'm pulling my previous color after I change colors a little bit just to tighten up the stitch a little, but I wanna make sure that I don't tighten it up too much so that way it's uh, not too hard to get into it when it's time to change colors again. So you can see there, I'm twisting the yarns together again, right there as I change colors. And I tighten that up just a little bit just to make sure it's the same size as the one next to it, okay? Pretty easy, it's pretty easy. So I am coming up to my last two stitches of my round. And I know it's my last two stitches because I can see where I changed colors here, but it's at this point I'm going to add a marker so that way I know where my spiral ends each time as well. So make sure I get into these stitches. I got a little bit more tight as I made these single crochets, so takes me a little bit of extra time. So there's my first one, and then here is my second one right here. And I wanna make sure that I change color. All right, I'm gonna change my color. Okay, so this will be my second round. I'm gonna do my uh, slip uh, or split single crochet into that stitch right there. And once I complete it, I'm gonna place my marker right into that chain essentially, or not chain, but that loop, it'll be the top of my stitch. So I'll go in piercing that stitch just like I've done before, nothing new, carrying my color A up the top so that way it's carried. But it's at this point, now that that loop that was on my hook is the top of the stitch, I'm going to just mark it, just so that I know that that is the end of my round. When I go to change colors, it just makes things a little bit easier as well. And now I continue on working around, okay? 
and just make sure you continue to change colors. Because remember, this round is the same, essentially, color sequence as the previous round, right? We haven't changed the, the order of the color because we're on round two. It's when we get past the, the second round, right? Because it's every two rounds, we will change colors in the sequence. All right, so I'm coming up to my end here, and I know because of my marker, obviously, but what I need to remember here is on this stitch where I normally would have changed colors, I'm not going to because I have to come over here and this first stitch over here is now going to be with this color. So I will go ahead and move my marker because I know that that's the start of my round. So I just continue carrying this color that I'm not using across, all right? So I'm gonna carry it across these two. So I go one, and then it's on this one that I will change the color on the second draw through, okay? Does that make sense? So now I would work two rounds using, um, putting these two colors on, or not two colors, this color on top of this color. Does that make sense? So that's gonna give me my checkerboard look. It's pretty easy stuff. You continue this manner through round six. It's on round seven that we introduce increases to make the gusset thumb stitches. So you will need some more stitch markers for this. It will really help you out, in my opinion. So let's get up to that point now. Once you get done with six rounds, your work looks a little something like this, and I'm ready to begin round seven, and it's on this round that I will start my thumb gusset. So I'm going to work in my established pattern over 13 stitches, okay? So let me move my marker up, and we're gonna get over 13 stitches, still maintaining our color changes and everything as usual. Now because it's an odd number that does mean that we're placing the gusset stitches between two different colors but that will be just fine when all is said and done here. So I'm gonna go like that. Alright so I'm getting ready to work my 13th stitch. So this is my stitch number 13 and it is in this next stitch and the following stitch, I want to begin my thumb gusset. And I wanna make my thumb gusset stitches all using this color. Now, do you have to use this color? No, if you wanna use the other one, you absolutely can. You could totally uh, change colors throughout the entire thing. You can make it your own as much as you want, but I did write it to be done in this color. So here's what we're gonna do. You're gonna place two split single crochets into this next stitch, all right? So I'm gonna place two of them there. And then what I want you to do is I want you to mark the first one, all right? So I'm gonna have you mark the first one with a stitch marker. I'm just having you mark the first one. And then in the next stitch, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna do two split single crochets. So there's one, and then here is two. Now remember, that I still need to maintain my sequence as I continue on. And my sequence right here for this next stitch is going to be with my color B. So I want to go ahead and make sure I'm changing my color in the last pull through of that. And then change to my next color for the next stitch. But it's only one stitch. <laughs> so you wanna change colors again, because it's only that one stitch there. Okay, you see that? Now I am gonna take another marker and I wanna place it into the second of those split single crochets there. Hopefully I didn't make those too tight and I'll be able to get into them. But essentially I have two markers here, okay? At those markers, that's where I will be working increases on the increase rounds for the thumb gusset, okay? I find it easier to have them marked. So now I continue on working the round, continuing my stitch pattern of the split single crochets and the color sequence that we are established um, or that we have established. Ooh. And so we're gonna do that until we come back to our gusset again. And when we get back over here to this gusset, 
we will work across those four gusset stitches with our color A. And then when we get to the third round, we're gonna work our increase again, okay? You see how that works, okay? So we're just gonna continue on. Okay, so here I am, I'm coming up to my gusset stitches. So I am just going to rest the color I'm not using, but then work across all of these gusset stitches using my color A. And as you work into the increase, take that marker and just move it up. Move it up so that it's on the same, the stitch that you made into the one that was marked. So that way you know where it needs to go when you do the increase next time. Do you need to have a marker there? No, I just find it so much easier to know where those stitches are and have a mark to remind me that that's, um, that's the point that I keep those increases. It's just one of those things. All right. And then don't forget to change colors. It gets a little tricky here, as you guys remember, making sure you change colors as often because it's just one stitch is a different color. But don't forget to put that back in place. There you go, and then continue on. So we're gonna get around one more time because I wanna show you how to work that increase one more time into that marked stitch. And then you would continue on working in this manner until all of your thumb gusset stitches are done. So let me get around until I get back to this part of the thumb once again, and I'll show you that increase one more time, okay? Okay, just to recap, I'm on round nine and I'm to the part where I'm going to increase at my gusset and the stitch right before my gusset stitches needs to be changed. So I will change colors for this stitch, right? I'll change colors for this one stitch, but I will change back to my color A so that way my gusset stitches remain in color A. Okay, so there's that first one. Now, in this first stitch here that I have marked, I'm gonna do an increase again. So I'm gonna put two split single crochets into that stitch. So I wanna make sure I get two into there and I wanna carry my other color. So it's hidden, so there's one and two. Once again, if you're using your marker, put it into the first one, so that way you know exactly where it is you're supposed to work that increase. And then we're going to do the split single crochet over to our other marker, or think of it as it's over to the other side of the gusset, and we're gonna do an increase again. Okay, so here it is. I'm going to put two increases, or I'm gonna to increase to two stitches here, just like so. And on this one here, I don't have to change color yet because this next stitch in my pattern is the same color. So it's after I do that one, I will change colors. You see that? So when it comes time to work those increases when you're doing that color change, it becomes a little bit tricky, but you can absolutely get this complete without any problems. Now I do wanna make sure I don't forget this one because it's not in that one, remember? It's in this one. It's the one that it was the second single slip, bleh, the second split single crochet we did in our increase. Can you see that? So you can already begin to see where your thumb gusset is going to be created, right? You continue in this manner working those gusset stitches until you have eight gusset stitches. It's at that point that you will work across to where your gusset stitches are and then you will chain two, skip all eight stitches of the thumb gusset and then continue on in the pattern so that way you're back to your original stitch count and those stitches you created with those increases are sticking out on the side so that way you have a thumb. It's really super easy to do. I'm going to simulate it right here. So we're going to put our imagination caps on and pull into imagination station and I'm going to pretend that we are to that part and I'm going to show you how to do that chain to skip a bunch of stitches and then continue on in pattern. All right, so join me right here and let's do that. 
Okay, so we are gonna pretend that we have all of our eight stitches here and we're ready to skip over them, okay? So this would be as if we were working the seventh round of the thumb gusset, okay? So we worked all the way over to where we have our gusset stitches. So it was if we worked 13 stitches and now we have all of our gusset stitches. So what I would have you do is I would have you chain two. So chain one, chain two, and then you'll skip all of those gusset stitches and come over here to this stitch and that's where you're going to join. So once you chain two, go ahead and place a marker into that second chain. So you could take your marker out of this one and just place it into that second chain just so that you know where it is later on, okay? And then you skip all eight stitches of your gusset, come over here to this stitch, and then work that stitch just as if you would any other stitch, okay? And so you make sure you carry your yarn over. I forgot to carry my yarn over, so let me do that. Carry my yarn over. <laughs> let me try this one more time. Carry the yarn, work my stitch, and it wants to disappear a little bit because as you're pulling it, right, it got to pull it just a little bit. But then you would just carry on. So make sure you change colors or do whatever you need to do. But these chain twos right here, those become the new um, portion of your pattern. So on the eighth round, as you're working around here, you work and you're going to place stitches into each of those chains right there, okay? You're going to place stitches into those chains and then you would continue on working in the pattern. So now you're back to where you started. So remember down here where we did our increases to start, right? We did our two increases here and our two increases here. So we used up two stitches in our main hand pattern to start the, the, the increases for the gusset. Well, these two chains right here represent those two stitches we had used down there. We are just starting two new stitches since these two are part of the thumb gusset. Does that make sense? Now, one thing I do want to make sure of is as you are coming back around and you're working into those chains, do yourself a favor and grasp that float right there that's going from this stitch over here as you're working into these chains on the next round and just make sure you kind of stick into it and hide that float so that way your thumb doesn't get caught in it. Okay, pretty easy stuff. And that sums up the everything you're supposed to do for this section. I want you to get through all of the stitches of the thumb gusset. And in the next video, we are going to talk about how to turn this into a fingerless mitt or a convertible mitt or a full on mitten. So you don't want to miss out on that. I hope you're enjoying this three in one hand warmer stitch along so far. I know I am. I'm having a good time working this pattern up with you. If you are, please make sure that you have smashed that like button and leave me a comment below and let me know what colors you are using for your mittens. I would love to know. All right, everybody. I'm Marley Bird and this is the Marley Bird YouTube channel. I'll talk to you again very soon. Bye.